On the Way Home, Part 2, August 4th. On the road at 745, a nice level road and good farms fenced with board fences. We're following the telegraph wires to Beatrice, then do not follow the railroad but go across country. We've crossed Little Salt Creek and Big Salt Creek. Orchards are common here as houses. Manny traded one fire mat for a whole bushel of large ripe apples. Plums are nearly ripe. Crops look splendid to us, but everyone tells Manly that they're very poor and will make no grain to mention. We passed the best field of oats that Manly ever saw. Made a hard, long drive to get to a good camp. And when we got there, we found the creek dry and no grass, but plenty of sand burrs. Camped in the edge of town. Sunday, August 5th. Same as last Sunday, saw five immigrant wagons, lost the thermometer. August 6th, started at 8.30 and reached Beatrice at noon. Corn all dried up and no ears on it. Oats and wheat threshed and a great deal of plowing done. Beatrice is not as large as Lincoln, but a nice town, I think. We saw the courthouse. It is handsome. Splendid roads all day. We crossed Blue River just south of Beatrice, drove through Blue Springs at 5 in the afternoon, and crossed Blue River again. Did not see much of the city because we drove along the north edge and down the east side past a big mill run by water power. The river runs east of the town, a very pretty river. I do not mention orchards anymore because they are common here. There are so many of them. We saw eight acres of seedling apple trees about 12 inches high near Blue Springs. Today has been quite cool, but a little too much wind. August 7th. On the road at 7.30, we crossed the line into Kansas at 10.28 and a quarter exactly. Judging from what we have seen and heard of Nebraska, the southeast corner is quite a good country, but taken as a whole, it's Nick's good. I don't like Nebraska. Cross Deer Creek at 11 o'clock. At 4 in the afternoon, we came to Marysville the county seat of Marshall County on the Blue River. Here there is a water mill, capacity 300 barrels a day. We saw many nice houses and two partial residences in town. Around one is a massive brick fence about five feet high, thick and strong looking. On each side of the front gate a large granite lion is crouching and on each side of the side gate a large granite dog is lying down. Beyond Marysville, we saw an acre of sweet potatoes, large dark green leaves on vines covering the ground. We drove 27 miles today and camped near a house where there were two men drunk. They had lost the bars off their wagon, wanted to trade horses, etc. Manly had a time getting rid of them without offense. August 8th. Started at 8.30. Soon crossed Little Elm Creek and Big Elm Creek and drove through the beautiful woods of elm, oak, ash, hickory, butternut, and walnut. Wild plums, grapes, and currants are abundant, and briars and wildflowers of all kinds. A rich sight. Cross Blue River again. A lovely river, so clean, always, and fresh and cool. We crossed it on a bridge. This bridge is about 300 feet long. Irving is a tiny, small town, but it has an opera house with a round roof. It looks like an engine boiler. Then we cross the blue again. Every time we cross it, it's lovelier than before. Improved land here is from 15 to $25 an acre. Could buy an 80 on the blue bottoms, well improved for 3,000. The bottom land is all good farms. The bluffs are stony. We camp near Springside, well named. There are springs on every side. I got water from a spring that boils up out of solid rock, cool and clear. August 9th. Started at 8.30. Awfully hilly roads and stony. We saw a milk house built out of stone with a spring running through it. A splendid thing. Land in Potawatomi County is $4 an acre and up. Camped in the edge of Westmoreland, the county seat. At supper time we had company. Some men, two women and children. There are regular southerners camped nearby traveling north to Nebraska or maybe Dakota looking for work. August 10th started at 8.30 and drove through the driest 
country we have ever seen since leaving Dakota. Went through Louisville, drove three miles farther, and camped on the bank of Vermill River. Some call it Stony Creek. August 12th. Today was not as monotonous as common. Three immigrant wagons passed us going south and one going north. Manley and Mr. Cooley took turns talking to the people. Five wagons were going to Missouri or Arkansas, one to Arkansas, one to Indian Territory. We had a good camping place on a little headland by the river. I rode little pet a while bareback, not going anywhere. She was turned loose to feed. Two immigrants talked to me, a young man and his mother in their wagon. They used to live in Missouri, went to Colorado, and now are going back to Missouri to stay. August 13th. Drove through St. Mary's. A pleasant town, but strange. It's altogether Southern and Catholic. There is a beautiful large church with a pure white marble St. Mary above the wide doors and two white marble statues of mother and child in the yard. The houses are neat and pretty. It was a clean town. We drove to the top of the little bluff to look over the Kansas River, and there on the bottomlands we saw cornfields stretching as far as the eye could reach. Manley said he should think there were a thousand acres in sight. On our way, Manley went to a farmhouse to trade a fire mat for some green corn for our supper, and we had an invitation to stay to dinner and put our horses in the barn and feed them. The woman came out to make me welcome. Such nice people, and a nice place, everything well kept up. Of course we could not stay. We could not be neighborly to them in return, and we must get to Missouri and settle before winter. At noon we went through Rossville, a small place, but just as we were going by the depot the train came in. The engine frightened Prince and he went through a barbed wire fence. He struck it straight and went right through it, end over end jumped up and ran against a clothesline and broke that and ran back to the fence. He stopped when Manley said, Whoa, Prince. And Manley helped him through the wire. He had only one mark, a cut about an inch long where a barb had struck him. How he ever got through so well is a wonder. Watermelons are ripe and plentiful. Manley and Mr. Cooley bought big ones for five cents. We stopped by the road in the shade of trees, and all of us had all the watermelon we could eat. We passed Kingsley Station, 80 miles west of Kansas City, Missouri, and 558 miles east of, the, of Denver, Colorado. Went through Silver Lake. The lake itself is south of the town. It is four miles long and half a mile wide, and trees are all around it. There is a place where a man rents boats. We camped in a schoolhouse yard. There was a hedge all around it and a pump by the house, besides a sycamore tree. Two families going by in covered wagons stopped for water. They had been to Missouri and were going back home to dispose of their property in Nebraska. Then they were moving to Missouri. It is terribly dusty. We breathe dust all day and everything is covered thick with it. 